everybody. And everything that has breath, praise you the Lord. We want to do some housekeeping really, really quick. If you are not sitting next to the person that you live with, I need you to distance yourself. If you do not live in the same household, I need you to be six feet apart. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's do that first. So look at your neighbor and say, do I live with you? If not, I need you to spread out a little bit. If y'all live together, get close. Amen. Amen. Bless God. We're excited about what God is going to do in this house under the stars tonight. Amen. We come to celebrate Jesus. We come to celebrate his goodness and his love and his kindness that he has granted to us for 36 years in the ministry. And we're just excited about what God has done and what God is going to do. We know that we are outside and we just come to celebrate him today. And we just ask you to just relax. But at the same time, we want you to engage in your praise. Amen. Because that's what we come to do. We come to celebrate him. That's the first and foremost. Amen. Glory to God. So look around at your neighbors and tell them, as Pastor Harvest just said this morning, come on, hug them with your heart. Amen. Just hug them with your heart. Let them know that we love each other. We're excited about what God is doing in this house today. We're going to ask Mel Safran to come on as we prepare our hearts to start our service on today. Amen. Glory to God. We thank God for a talk that is in the house. Amen. Yes, we thank y'all so much for But the word of God promises 
now occupy was dedicated to God for the work of the gospel. Not over. Although we have transitioned in many ways and have lost the good soldiers that have laid the groundwork for this great ministry, the Lord is graciously preparing us to do a mighty and glorious work for him as we move forward to develop new and innovative plans to enhance our ministry for the work of the kingdom. We feel blessed by God who has provided us with the dedicated system past the hardest with and such modest and committed leaders the resources to continue to carry out the vision of our Pastor Larry and to help with the growth of the discipleship. We will continue to fulfill the vision of Pastor Adela Larry to walk in the spirit of excellence, for there is still more work to be done. For 36 years, the Lord has given us sound doctrine, wisdom, power, and love. He has kept, strengthened, and healed us. He has delivered, freed, rewarded, and blessed us mightily. The harvest is plentiful. People are lost, hearts are hurting, and the community is in need of what True Love Deliverance Church has, which is the love of Christ. The best is yet to come. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all put your hands together. Come on, praise the Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many know today is the best day of your life? How many believe that today? How many confess that and declare that right now of your life? Look at your neighbor and say, today is the best day. Today is the best day. Oh, my life. You need to say it like you mean it.
sometimes but you know what we have to look at how God is still blessing and as, as I was telling the uh, congregation this morning I'm we so grateful hallelujah even during this pandemic that nobody hallelujah God that we had to have no funerals glory to God we didn't have to bury anybody hallelujah glory to God the enemy tried to sneak in hallelujah but everyone recovered glory to God and we give God great we give God great praise for that that's enough to put your hands together
thank you, we praise you. Lord, you said, Lord, you said, give, give, give and, it shall. and it shall. We give it unto you. We give it unto you. In good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. When you call, you call. Then to give unto my bosom. God, I gave willfully, cheerfully to the rest of the gospel. Now, God, I'm accepting. to God, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. And uh, to Pastor McCray and uh, Elder Barbara McCray and to 
all the other ministers. It's just good for us to be here. Yes, Amen. Amen. So we're just going to take a deep breath and breathe out. Isn't that wonderful to be able to breathe? Amen. 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 Uh, you know, I'm no stranger. Everybody here knows me. And uh, let's just relax. You know how to be? We outside. You know, we're unrestricted. You know, it seems like we ought to just be willing to praise God even louder. Amen. We don't even have a ceiling out here. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord for my lovely wife, Sister Ann Harris. Let's give her a hand. Amen. Amen. Being here. Amen. It's such a great opportunity just to be here with you all today to share 36 years of laboring in the kingdom. Give yourself a hand. Praise. 36 years. And you didn't give up. Some of you are not even 36 years old, which gives credence to your pastor who has changed, trained a generation, who has brought along another generation, who are continuing to serve the Lord. As I look over and I see the young men just sitting near the drums who weren't here 36 years ago. And, uh, but they're there with ambition. Sometimes we look at them as just little kids sitting around, but one day they'll be playing the very instruments they're sitting behind. And so we just thank God for them. And we thank God for this opportunity. Thank the Lord for this invitation to come out to be with you today, to share with you the word of the Lord. I can't think of any other place I'd rather be than right here with you all this afternoon. And we thank God for the shade of this building. We thank God for the nice breeze that's coming through these trees here. Amen. We just give God the glory. The Apostle Paul says, in all things, give thanks. And we're just so thankful today. I promise you, I won't be before you long this evening. And uh, But we're going to ask you if you would turn with us to your theme which is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, and the ninth verse. And it reads, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the good things, which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now I'd like to use for a subject this afternoon coming from your theme, the best is yet to come. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Yeah. Truly the best is yet to come. As we look around in our world today, and we see all the things that's going on in the world today, turmoil, the confusion that was going on prior to the pandemic. And as the pandemic came along, it compounded the things that are going on in the world. And as we look and we see the different wars and conflicts that's going on all over the world, the things that have been happening here has taken precedent over those things. And we don't even pay that much attention to those things that are going on in other parts of the world because we have many problems here that belong to us. But we who trust in the Lord, we who believe in God, we who have put our faith and our trust in God, we have something to look forward to. Amen. In spite of what's going on today, how dark the day may look, how terrible it may seem, all the confusion in the world, the best is yet to come for the saints of the Lord. You ought to just be giving God a praise right now, knowing that the best is yet to come. In the book of 1 Corinthians, the second chapter and the first verse, the apostle Paul is writing here to the church at Corinth, and he says, And I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save 
Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And so the apostle Paul is telling him, look, I'm not coming to you as a sophisticated man. I'm not coming to you with a lot of big words. I'm not coming to you with words to explain, tell you in Latin, and then I have to tell you what that means. I'm not here telling you in Hebrew to tell you, to quote the words to you, and then go back and tell you what that means. Because you don't speak Hebrew here. All right. We speak English here. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you in a method that you can understand plainly. So the Apostle Paul says, although I am a multilingual person, I'm telling you in a method that you can easily understand. I'm not using men's wisdom. And he says, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and power. So he says, it's not about how I say it, but it's founded in the spirit and the power of God. Yeah. And he says, why does he do this? Why is he saying this? He says, that your faith should not stand in uh, the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yeah. You know, as you li listen to a lot of people speak, a lot of preachers speak, and I'm not talking against preachers by no means because I'm one myself. Right. But what I'm saying is a lot of times people bring a message with such great sophistication on, that now. everybody can't even understand what you're talking about. Right. If you speak English and I speak English, we should not need a translator Come here on. to tell you or to convey to you what I'm saying. Amen. The word of God says to rightfully divide the word of truth. Yes. Now that doesn't mean training the, changing the word of truth because it means to give it to you in a portion in which you are capable of receiving it. Yes. Meaning if I were to have uh, one of these babies come over here and we were serving uh, a pound cake, uh, he may not be able to handle but maybe a couple of spoons full and he's going to be satisfied. But if I call my brother uh, Vincent up here, I may have to give him a couple of slices before right. he's satisfied and he can handle it. So what it's talking about here in, in, in the gospel is to give it to a person in the fashion in which they can understand it. That, uh, King Solomon say in all thy getting, he said get wisdom, get knowledge. But he says, in all thy getting, get understanding. Amen. Because if you don't understand what I'm saying, then it's totally irrelevant to you. It should be applicable to your everyday life, what you are experiencing today. And so Paul is telling him, I don't, I'm not using any big words. I'm just telling you plainly who God is. He said, how be it I speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Say, those who can understand me on a higher level, I talk to you on a higher all level. Right. And he says, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. He said, but I speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even a hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the, before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of the world say, the world don't understand this. The Bible says to the world, the gospel is foolishness. They don't understand it. Why those people out there sitting on the edge of that hill, listening to some music and clapping their hands? That don't make no sense to us. Why they come out in the evening time, standing out, talking about a God they cannot see? They don't understand that. They don't understand why we're not at home watching the game or entertaining ourselves. They don't understand that this is beyond their perception. And the, but the Bible says through the foolishness of the gospel. But we understand it. And he says that uh, everybody, the world has not understand this. He says, eyes have not seen, yes. nor ear heard, uh -huh. neither has it entered into the heart of man, the good thing that God has yes. in store for them that love him. Yes. He said, but you understand it. Yes. You know what you're going to get. Yes. You know the goodness you're going to get from God. So it's not a mystery. While it's mysterious to the world, it's mysterious to the world that we come out and pray. It's mysterious to the world that you get out and on, on your knees and call on the name yes. of Jesus. It's mysterious to the world why you speak in tongues. Right. It's mysterious to the world that when the Spirit right. of God gets to moving, yes. you want to walk around and, and, and move and, and something is stirred you up. It's mysterious to the world yes. because they don't understand right. who God really is. But uh, but but God is a God.
God is not a God of the world, but but the world somehow they can understand when 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 these uh, 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 musicians get on stage and they're playing ungodly things. They understand those things because they're not of God. But the thing about it is, and as as they live in the world that they live in, and we see the things that's happening in the world, they, they, they feel threatened because they're losing what they have. A man feels threatened when you're taking everything he's got. When we when we look at the at the uh, the financial state of the world today, when the stock market began to to fall, people began to panic. When people started losing money, they began to panic because. That is their God. That's what their value is in. Those are the things that they hold the most important to them. And so they feel like they were losing something. But we who are the saints of God, the poor of God, the one who don't have all the money in the world, the one that Jesus is our all in all, the one that Jesus is everything we need to be, we didn't lose. We didn't feel like we lost nothing. And the thing it is, my brother and my sister, there is, there is a benefit of growing up poor. There's a benefit of not having have all the amenities of life. There's a benefit of coming up in, in a time when uh, a turmoil and adversity, there is a benefit. There's a benefit of coming up doing struggle because when real, tr real trouble comes, you're not quick to fold and run and cry. When real trouble comes, you're not quick to go home and lay down and get in and shut your door. When real trouble comes, you're not subject to run and jump out the build window of a building because you've lost it all. But Jesus is my all in all. I hadn't lost anything during this pandemic. But my Bible say, eyes have not seen, neither ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the good thing that God has in store for them that trust him. So my brother and my sister, I'm here to tell you the best is yet to come. Amen. We may not be in the nice building we built out here, but we're still in God. We're still in God's kingdom. We may not be enjoying all the fine air conditioning all that, but we're still in Christ Jesus. And so as the world look around and find themselves in turmoil and find themselves losing the things they struggled and worked so hard for. See, when a man works for something, he can lose those things that he works for. Those foundations that man lays, those foundations can be overweighted and broken. But we're standing on a foundation that's laid down by Jesus Christ. Where he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So in spite of what we see going on today, in spite of what we may be facing today, in spite of what it looks like today, the best is yet to come. Because I'm here to tell you, we're not standing on what we see today. Because the word of God say we'll, we walk by faith and not by sight. So it's just like when we walk in, we're not seeing, going by what we see. Because as we look around with our eyes, it don't always look the best way. It don't always look like you got the best health in the world. But we're not walking by, by sight, we're walking by faith. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, without faith it's impossible to please God. So, because it says before man come to God, you got to first believe that he is. And as we stand here on the edge of this hill tonight, we're all celebrating together knowing that the best is yet to come. Regardless of where we find ourselves in, we know that it's going to get better than it is today. And then many of you may be sick in your body. Many of you, you may have financial issues. You may have financial struggles. You may have trouble in your marriage, trouble in your family, trouble among your children. But I'm here to tell you, in spite of all these things, the best is yet to come. So you may not can see well enough out in the future to know it's going to get any better, but my Bible tells me it's going to get a lot better. Jesus spoke to this time and let us know that so won't come upon us unaware. Let us know there was going to be trouble in these days. Because when Jesus spoke in the book of St. Matthew, the, the uh, 24th chapter, he says that, that uh, before he came, he said, wouldn't be one stone upon another left in Israel. He said there'll be wars and rumors of war. Earthquakes in the first place. So it's going to be a lot of terrible things come in. But Jesus said, but the end is not yet. But he said, but those who are in Christ Jesus, you don't have anything to worry about. The world has a need to worry. But those who are in Christ Jesus, you don't have anything to worry about. I heard the word of God say, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. 
The righteous run into it and I'm safe. I'm in my safe place this evening because I'm in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ Jesus, you're in your safe place. When the storm comes, you're in your safe place. When trial comes, you're in your safe place. I heard one pastor of scripture say the angels of the Lord and camp round about the righteous. So you don't have to worry. You got your angel with you everywhere you go. You don't have to worry about being in trouble or falling down or stumbling because I heard Jesus say, Lo, I'm with you always until the end of the world. Yeah. So you're in a good place right now. And I'm here to tell you the oh best is God. yet to come. Sometimes we wonder about those people now who started out with us some 36 years ago and how they labored and gone on into eternity. Yeah. And look like they didn't get everything they deserved in this world. Now. But I'm here to tell you, God has not forgotten okay. them. Because I heard the word of the Lord say in the book of Malachi, then them that feared the Lord, the, the saints spoke often one to another. And a book of remembrance was written for them who trusted in the Lord and called upon his name. And the Lord said, when I come to make up my jewels, they shall be mine, said the Lord. So they know they are resting in Praise. I heard John say in the book of Revelation, Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord, for they rest from their labels, and their works do follow them. So though they're sleeping in their grave, they have not lost their reward. So don't worry about them. God has just given them a time for them to lay down and get some rest. God has just given them a time to take some take a break right now. But he has a time set aside that those of us who are still laboring, we're going to all be joined together, and it's going to be a good time when Jesus comes. It's turmoil in the world now, but it's going to be a good time when Jesus comes. He's coming out the clouds, and every, every eye's going to see him. So don't worry about what's going on now. God has a time set aside for those who have labored and laying in the grave. His angel's going to blow a trumpet and they're going to get up from the grave. And we which are alive and remain, we're going to join them and meet them in the air. So don't worry about their labor. God has not forgotten us. Man will forget about us. You can support a man and work hard and struggle and get him standing on their feet. And the first thing they forget about is you. But I heard the Lord say, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He sees they be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I know sometimes you get discouraged because it seems like you do good all the time and people still work against you. You help everybody all the time and nobody want to give you a hand. But I want you to know one thing for sure. God is not blind to your labor, your labor of love that you've served down through the years. Just keep on standing no matter what you have to think. Because the best is yet to come. You say, how do I know about the best is yet to come? But I cause I heard John in the river book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, and the first verse, he said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride of dawn for her husband. And I heard him say, behold, the tabernacle of God is with me. And he would dwell with them, and he shall be his people. And God himself shall be their God. And God going to wipe all tears from their eyes. There'll be no more sorrow and no more pain. For the former things are passed away. And you might ask, what are those former things? Well, the lying, that's part of those former things. Anguish, that's part of those former things. Backbiting, that's part of those former things. Pain, is part of those former things. Death, is part of those former things. Corruption in the government is part of those former things. But he said the former things are passed away. He said they're going to delight themselves in the abundance of peace. So don't you worry, man. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. You continue to hold on to the Lord. The best is yet to come. 
I know sometimes it's hard, difficult when you look out and you see what's going on in the world. You say, Lord, how are we going to come out of this? And I can tell you how you're going to come out on, on, on out of this. You're going to come out on top. Because you can't lose with God. You can't always see how it's going to go, but everything God's going to make it turn out in your faith. Because he says, but we know that all things, all things work together for good to them who love the Lord, to those who are the called according to his purpose. So my brother and my sister, in my closing remarks today, I tell you, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Truly, the best is yet to come. God bless you.
those that uh, helped celebrate on today, those that came out, Sister Jackson, who does a phenomenal job with everything that she do. She's in the, in the church, I mean, in the fellowship hall, preparing the food for today. But she is such a phenomenal woman that all you have to do is just ask her, and she'll make it happen. So y'all give Sister Leah a hand. Let her know we acknowledge her. Amen. Amen for her faithfulness. Pastor said, please. <laughs> Pastor wanted to honor two, two faithful, uh, three faithful people uh, in this house. Not that everyone has been not been faithful, but she God laid it on her heart to show special recognitions to these individuals. And she, she said to me, she said, there is not enough money to pay these individuals for what they have done in this ministry and especially doing this time being that pastor is a seasoned woman and if she did not have the help that she has on her side we're not really sure what we would have done during this pandemic amen because we all know pastor is 87 and she don't mind me telling her age amen amen and we know that pastor can't set up an iPad and, you know, um, not that she can't, that she's just not willing to learn. Isn't that right, Minister Rosa? That's our mother of the house. And she is tech savvy. <laughs> Amen. But pastor wanted to acknowledge um, our assistant pastor, Pastor Horace, if you could come up. He's also man of God, and I'm not saying that because he belongs to me. But he is an awesome man of God. A man that loves God's people. A man that is faithful. A man that took the role, even though he was in the assistant pastor role, to make sure that the kingdom did not go lacking during this time. And for that, Pastor want to honor you today. She want to tell you thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for stepping up when we didn't know what else to do. And we was forced to do what we had to do. We had to sit iPads up on the table. And we set phones up and it didn't work sometimes. And it did work sometimes. But to God be the glory. The message was conveyed to the body of Christ. And the body of Christ, you tuned in every time. So thank God, if you didn't tune in, he didn't have anybody to preach the gospel to, amen? So we want to say, Pastor, on behalf of Pastor Larry, and Pastor, I asked Pastor to do it. She's like, no, we just do it. And I said, people don't think I'm biased because that's my husband, but I am. <laughs> but we want to say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for your willingness, amen, for the hours that you have to study hard everything else to make sure that the gospel get out. It may not be the gospel how some people want it heard, but as Bishop said, it's the plain gospel. And it's the truth that we love you for it, and we thank God for you. Amen. We love you so much. And I just want to I'm in love, Pastor Harris. Amen. We want Deacon Larry to come up. The hardest working man in the ministry outside of overseer. I don't care what nobody say. This is the hardest working man when it comes to kingdom work. This is the hardest working man when it comes to kingdom work. Glory to God. This man get off his job. He going to do whatever he got to do to make sure this house is intact. Amen. This house, true love, I'm talking about true love. He put sometimes his house on the back burner. Thanks be to God that he got a wife that loved the Lord so much that she said, you do you what you got to do for that house because God will bless our house. Amen. When I say we honor you, we honor you. There is not enough words and there is not enough funds to pay you for the sacrifice that you make for this house on top of this hill. There is not enough money that we could ever pay you for 
for what you do for this house. Thank you for being rooted and grounded in this house. Thank you for loving the kingdom of God so much that you sacrifice your hours, your time, and your money, and your efforts to make sure that the doors of this house stays open. And we honor you. We honor you, Deacon Larry. We honor you. Amen.
Uh, I want to thank Bishop uh, Bishop Harris. I've been telling uh, uh, Pastor Harris for your elevation. Amen. I thank God for you. We watch you. And you're, just, you're awesome. Amen. I thank God for all the pastors out there and everybody. Uh, Pastor McCray and Pastor McCray. Amen. Uh, I just give God to, to all of you. Thank you. I came from poor, okay? Poor to me, but 13 brothers and sisters, we was poor. And now I understand it. Now I know what's going on. I said, if I can work 12, 13 hours a day on my job, during this crisis, I can come to church and work. I just want to thank True Love and everything. All the people that True Love just, I love you. There ain't nothing I can say or do or know to tell you how much I love you. I said, I tell my wife all the time, I said, three places I love so much. I love my home. I love my church and I love my pastor home. And this is all I know. This is why I grew up. This is what my overseer taught me. He taught us how to work and how to give, how to survive and how to help. And then know how to spend and save and put back. And I just want to pour out some true love who I love so much. It's nothing I won't do for each and every one, Lord Jesus. I just thank you all for coming out. I thank y'all. That's why I want the doors to stay open for y'all to welcome to praise the Lord like you want to. And then you know what? It's, it's a lot gonna come. Y'all gonna be surprised. Uh, true love gonna be here. We're gonna be here when I'm gone. They're gonna be here when my son have great the kids. I want true love to be here another two or three hundred years while I'm long gone to glory. That's what it's all about. Keeping it, the church going, growing. That someone else step up in my place. My son said today, I want to be another deacon. So when you get in that role, you follow me. Because I grabbed my overseer leg and I grabbed his, his uh, church hand and ran with it. So you get in front of me. You learn, show me something new. And but I love each and every one of, one of you. I love my house. I love my mother. I love my sister, Lord Jesus. I thank her. She stays on me. But I love each and every one. And I can't not say, I would not sit down if I can't say I love my, my wife. Yeah. Stand on, baby. Yeah. I love her. She give me the okay. When it comes down to true love to them, she give me the okay. I have ideals. She give me the okay. And I love her. And I thank you for it. But believe me, it's going to come back to you. I just love and I love each and every one of you. <laughs> Thank God for, for the word. It is best it is yet to come. Yes. I believe it. I, I come to this ministry a long time ago. And I, I didn't know what to say. I said, God, show me the way. God, show me the way. Thank God for it. with you. 